poetry, passion, purloined like purses, stolen, snatched, ensnared from me, words wrangled, wrapped, and weeded till only toothless tragedies remain. Fragmented facades of fantasies, folly, struggling through my sieve of a mind, taken and twisted until untouchable, tangled, and spit like saliva on these lines. A cage of carelessness coerced this course, no fault or flagrant foul performed by others ostracizing or over-criticizing. My deeds were done by only one. My own mistakes, misnomers, misfortune, misanthropy, my own problem. A search for substantial sustenance, intimate intellectual intercourse, and restoring, reanimating the shriveled shell of self I used to be. Regaining me. Hello, I'm Azrael Johnson. Hi, Azrael. I believe in gravity. Um, I'm the founder slash director slash dude of Writing Nights. Um, thank you for coming. We're going to have an awesome show. Um, um, uh, one of our features had to back out at the last minute, so myself and my lovely uh, partner, Skylark, will, all, will be filling in for him. And then we have uh, Langley Smith. Give her a round. And the close out tonight will be Zach Ashley. And give some claps for yourselves, for so those of you who are going to be in the open mic. Um, there's one thing Writing Nights likes to do during their shows, is uh, remind people of why they write, who they write, how they write. And cetera. where the bathroom is, it's right there. And the bathroom's over there, then you can write in the bathroom if you like. <laughs> so we, it's kind of a call and response, so I'll begin. A couple of you know it, and the rest of you can kind of follow around, along. The best time to write is... Now! The best place to write is... Here! Yeah. The best person to write is... You! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm knew that. I don't, I don't think I started doing that. Like Unless I, you just watched the videos. No, I didn't. I, it was pretty intuitive. Okay. Yeah, I was like... <laughs> are, so most people look at me like, what are you trying to do, man? But, all right. So my, uh, my second poem of the evening will also require some crowd participation, and don't worry, I'll keep going until you get it right. <laughs> People! What? What? Yes. One more time. People! What? what? Put your shopping carts away. It means more than you might think to other shoppers and the lowly cart guy who risks his life every day cleaning up after messy, inconsiderate fuckers who leave their carts on the lot and wield 2,000-pound lethal weapons. Sure, dings on scratches on other people's cars are your concern, but heaven forbid a cart come in contact with your car. Oh no, then it's on like Donkey Kong and King Kong put together. How dare those idiots scratch my car? I'd sue if I knew who did it. Right, but you don't catch who scratched your car because you did it yourself. Remember when you couldn't be bothered to walk the 50 steps to the car corral because you had on new shoes and it was sprinkling? Yes, it matters. It's the golden rule and the butterfly effect and the threefold law all wrapped up into one. There are three steps to avoid getting scratches on your car. Step one, put your shopping carts away. Step two, help other people in any way you can. Be tall when they are short. Be steady when they are shaken. Be strong when they are weak. Step three, when you hear a crash of carts coming towards you, stand back, there's a cart man coming through. And remember, if you give of yourself to other people, you will be rewarded, whether it's by gods or the flying spaghetti monster or karma or the force or Newton's law of action and reaction. If you put a piece of yourself out there to help others, you will get it back onefold threefold, sevenfold. Yes, it matters because there is so much shit in the world, we have to start shoveling it into fertilizer. Let's turn the soil together. Black, white, yellow, brown, red, gay, straight, pan, male, female, trans, Christian, Jew, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, polytheistic, anti-denominational, ag atheist, agnostic, Satanist, pagan, 
We all need to contribute. No one can do this alone. But there is one thing we can do ourselves. Put your shopping carts away. Because yes, it matters. Let's give a quick round of applause to Dust because they are letting us do this. Here. Woo! Um, anybody who has not paid the five dollar admission, make sure you talk to Skylark sometime tonight. And also, we do have books for sale by Writing Nights authors over at that main desk over there, and, and also in the corner, right next to the window, because that's I mean Dust. We have books here, so and we have performance CDs as well. And we have performance CDs. And since I'm going to be trying to liquidate my CDs, if you buy anything, anything at all tonight, I will give you one of my CDs. And if I run out of CDs, I'll go grab you. <laughs> Check out the live, like, four more the other gallery. So this one, this one is about fall, but, you know, spring. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> it's a sonnet. It's called Soundtrack of the Night. Mid-fall eve, trees rustle as the wind moves. Faces in my mind evoking slowed heart rhythmic sound, double muscle dancing grooves. Taking tender steps, a jolting jump start alive in the chest of someone I think may provide a lasting connection. Fear of my own faults keeps my voice out of sync and my mind focused on being endearing. The leaves and the rain try to explain to me how letting go feels. But I'm deaf to musical wisdom. My heart and brain fight so hard I don't know what's left or right. Similar to the fall night, wind blowing, my dreams away, the real world showing. And one more piece from me. Um, this was written as a wedding piece for my niece and her now ex-husband. So, I guess the moral is don't let me write for your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> or don't marry a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> and he is a dickhead. That's objective. Love isn't finding the perfect person. Love isn't roses and sunshine. Love isn't always being certain that you'll wake and sleep at the same time. Love isn't always the best thing, but it also isn't the worst. But true love will keep you breathing and quenching unquenchable thirst. Love isn't a crowded ballroom and seeing that one person there. Love is closer to stark solitude and feeling that one person cares. Love isn't just chemical firing endorphins through your nerves. Love can be physically tiring, the emotional roads traversed. Love isn't an answered prayer. Love isn't a gift from God's. Love finds that person to be there through trials no matter the odds. Our lives take many versions. Love grows through opportunity. Love isn't finding the perfect person, but seeing that person perfectly. Thank you. All right, we're gonna, um, like I said, two, three great features in me, and books and great creative space all around us. So please enjoy yourself. Our next performer has been with me since nearly the beginning of Writing Nights, and she's done a lot of things in the name of Writing Nights, so I appreciate that. Please welcome Skylark Roots. The man has a plan. The man has a plan of how to make this city better. The man is smart about parking and focusing small at first. The man has a plan about the people who belong in the city, but it doesn't include you. Or you, or you, or me. We're not clean enough. Some of us walk or bike, some of us take the, the bus, and some of us are even smokers. Our jobs are not prestigious, our bank accounts don't have enough digits, and heaven forbid we be among those dreaded renters. The man has a plan of downtown resnobization. It is balmy in concept, but dastardly in execution. The man has a plan. First on his list is to get rid of those people who eat in the park on Sundays. 
Those people, the smelly, mangy, rowdy lot who show up for a free food and a fistful of dignity. They are not welcome in his perfect vision. The man with the plan seeks young white professionals to live in the lofts of a former luxury hotel. Where the teeming masses will go is not his concern. Out with the non-traditional students and the recovering junkies. Out with the call center workers on their breaks and the hungry poor people who dare to line up in public. Out with support services. Out of sight and out of our minds. In with some musicians and artists, except the poor ones. He plans to price them out. This is hardly class warfare. This is nuisance extermination. The man has a plan, and it's a good one, if you don't read all 97 pages. <laughs> The happiest person I know lives outside. The happiest person I know makes his bed below a tree every night. His joy cannot be contained by any human structure. His soul expands, limitless, into the cosmos. He looks at a handful of grass and clover and sees archaeological treasure. In fact, he collects these treasures, filling his pockets with historic inventory. Some people see only mundane sprigs and leaves, or scoff at his twisted hair and fraying clothes. But they do not matter to him. He has never met a human he didn't like. Squirrels, birds, and rabbits count him as their own. And his tree dips her branches down, down, down to ensure shelter from critical eyes. When he does amble indoors, it is to the most mind-expanding institution of all, the library. Troves of knowledge on every subject, including his beloved archaeology, surround him and the humans he encounters. Perhaps not everything is rosy in his world, but no one would ever know it based on his perpetual demeanor. He has solved the Buddhist's 84th problem because he does not desire to have no problems. Some Westerners say that happiness is an inside job and most people are as happy as they make up their minds to be. I don't know if he made up his mind or if psychosis made it for him. I do know there are far worse reputations to have than to be Nelson, my neighbor, the happiest person I know. <laughs> you said, Jesus fucking Christ, but must you? I'm not saying you have to have the same respect I do for the person called Jesus Christ, but do you know any other swearing names to use? Vary it up a little. Try out Muhammad or Buddha. Shout Hare Krishna when you scrape your knee. Let's be fair and give all major religions a shot in obscenity. Turn heads when you declare, Raw the fucking sun god! Or, Oh Zeus! when it feels like the world is on top of you. Oh, Cyrus. Blame the idiocy you see around you on Thor or the Japanese emperor. Next time you rant about your mother, flavor it with, oh, my ancestors. Or, son of a witch doctor. We are a global society. Pull your cursing from all faiths. <laughs> I should mention that um, I don't know how many of you saw the discount on the back of the flyer. Uh, we I, the Quick Print is closed already, but they were offering 15% off print orders. But uh, Culture Coffee will be open till 10 or 11, and they are offering one free large coffee um, as long as you buy a waffle. So that's down this way a couple of blocks, and I've got a whole stack of flyers over here. So if anybody wants that, you can make sure that you get that. <laughs> White noise, definition. Low decibel background sounds, such as appliances or window fans. See also, problematic words from white people that drowns out the truth. The constant humming, the droning on, the unceasing roar that blocks other sounds from being heard. White noise from white people. It is not inconsequential. It is not meaningless, and it is definitely not non-threatening. If you 
white person felt like you always had to shout for anyone to hear you, you would start to think something was up. And once you do get heard, half the people criticize you for shouting and the other half pick apart details. Everyone ignores the white noise, except that it is always there. Always there, deafening the airspace. All lives matter is white noise. Black people can be racist too is white noise. I don't see race is white noise. I have black friends is white noise. Not to be racist, but is white noise. <laughs> the alternative to white noise is not silence. We can, uh, white noise helps us fall asleep. We can fall asleep living in our dream, or we can wake up and listen to the people whose voices we have ignored. White noise, definition. Noise by white people that we can choose to turn Our next performer 